Okay, on today's video, we're going to talk about your sales. Whether or not we should panic if our sales are down, you know, past few days or for the past week or even a couple weeks. Um, how to actually ha uh, handle or manage that because obviously anybody that's running ads is going to run into this problem whether or not you really should be panicking or not. And I'll definitely start out by saying that there is a time to panic, and there's time not to panic. So if you don't want an ulcer, when you're gonna be running these PPC ads for years for your business, and yes, I understand, you know, you have, you're on tight margins and you can't afford to have any kind of drop and you have lots of overhead and so on and so forth, you're playing a high stakes game, I get it. So. Of what with all the information I'm about to share with you here today is going to let you know when to start to panic and when not to so you know when to do something doing too much at, and too soon is detrimental to your results not doing enough and waiting too long is also detrimental to your results so there's a specific formula I follow I've been doing this for 15 years now worked on hundreds of accounts on Google understand how their system works, how to deal with it, seeing all the changes, and the normal cascade of different things I check as soon as I do notice my sales are down long enough to where I should definitely be panicking. So you can follow the same thing for yourself and ultimately come out the other side with a lot better plan moving forward for your business other than what you know 90% of companies out there, big or small, are doing it doing which is just winging it they don't know what to expect day to day week to week month to month year to year um, that which I'm going to explain is the totally wrong thing that you should be doing if you want to be in position to know when to react and how to react and how much to react here like uh, I'm going to share with you here today and you again we'll just be able to sleep better at night which is the other half of the benefit of this whole thing I'm about to show you here so my sales are down this week oh oh no should I actually be worried? <laughs> and the answer is no. But dot dot dot. There's some other you know when to start being worried. I'm actually going to also describe this that to you in this video as well. So anyway, let's get into it. The goal should always be dot 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 to not panic. In which we unless we really need to, and in which how do we do that? It really all comes down to the word preparation. If you, if you read Sun Tzu, Art of War, your business owner, you probably have, um, you realize that one's, wars are won with the preparation that you do. PPC is when you wanna kick the crap out of your competitors, whoever does more for the end user to give them the better experience is gonna be who wins. But on top of that, you gotta have a plan. You can't just be winging stuff. You got to be able to figure out what they're doing, how I'm going to do more, and how it's going to be executed, and not just okay. We need to execute this. Go. It's it's a long term proposition to do the hundreds of hours of cumulative or thousands of hours of cumulative work that it's going to take to generate a multi multi million dollar a year generating uh, a year generating account for yourself. And so you want to come up with benchmarks along the way at least short term like on a on a um, few months basis to know what you should have what when you should be having it and so with that the preparation going back to the word preparation here again given that you have done the preparation right you will get the right things done because you figured out what you need to do and then basically you know anything that's not on a set timeline where you don't have any actual deadlines anything trust me our other clients don't get that stuff done so you will be the actual one has the discipline at that point to get what you need done to do better than them and you're going to be the one that rakes in all the cash so that said there definitely always is a time to panic the trick is just knowing when so again uh, basic so there's a specific time frame in which i'm going to quote unquote start to panic if to answer the question specifically uh, about the title of this video my sales are down this week the reason why I title it this is because the most common thing that I get from people, particularly when they're starting out, there's always a process when you bring on a new client, especially if they're not familiar with AdWords. There's lots and lots of questions at the beginning of the, of the arrangement with them. 
and because they're not familiar with the system and they don't they're not familiar with the fluctuations and the ups and downs that you have with it so they're they're more apt to panic starting right away if they can get through that and they listen to what i have to say and and what to expect and how things do fluctuate and that things will fluctuate they become a mature client and they go on to make those millions of dollars in sales long term from their account but uh so with that week to week or you know your sales are going to fluctuate. That's just how it is, okay? As much as you want to say, oh, my, you know, my sales are down 30% this week. Do something about it, Corey. Do something about it. I'm going to come back to you and say, if you're my client, there's nothing to be done. I mean, I, I'll take a quick glance at a few things, but for the most part, it's not enough data to be able to say that there's anything wrong. It could be completely, completely, completely normal that that happens. You, that you had, you know, 10,000 sales normally a week on average, you got seven this week. For the most part, there's nothing wrong, okay? That said, moving forward, when do we know? So obviously, Corey, well, you're telling me not to panic. I have all this anxiety. When do I start to panic? <laughs> and the answer to that is, uh, what well, as mentioned, your week to week, your sales are just gonna go up and down. The, the reason for that is, is because search demand varies week to week a lot of people don't really recognize they say why well, my sales down when you and i tell them hey there's different amounts of people searching for what you sell you know all the time do you really think there's going to be exactly eight thousand people searching for red shoes or leather shoes that you sell this week and next week no one week it could be ten thousand next week it could be you know, 6,000, it goes all over the place. And so if you're running Google search ads, that's the way it is. And of course, when you're running banner advertising and with the search advertising, there's all kinds of different things like the weather that affect whether or not someone's gonna buy this week or next week because of the mood changes, Super Bowl, holidays. These are just a number of other things that can affect your sales. Anytime you get near a holiday, your sales are gonna be crap for the most part unless you're in some very select industries, not very many, because uh, people are distracted. Again, near Super Bowl, sales are gonna take a hit. Um, as far as like the weather stuff goes, you know, basically you can't really pick it out. Um, you know, if there's a hurricane, obviously your sales are gonna go down, but a lot of times it's just if there's a low pressure front and in a certain area, the sales will be better because people are inside uh, for certain products, they'll, they'll be down because people are more depressed and they don't buy things as much when they're more depressed. So there's all, not to say that you have to know all this stuff. This is just stuff that I know from doing research and understanding and looking at numbers for many, many, many years. That there's just no rhyme or reason to it per se from a, from, for a novice starting out to know why the sales are going to go up and down like that. But there, there's plenty of different reasons for the reasons that I said uh, that they go up and down. Um, those are the, but those are the kind of the bigger factors, the macro level factors, if you will, in terms of the stuff that you can't basically do anything about. Okay. Beyond that, getting to my point here, unless your sales are down more than 50% or, uh, or more than two weeks straight, there is no reason to panic. So I know that's pretty cut and dry. It seems a little weird that you are saying that, uh, you know, my sales are down. I'm anxious. The first thing you always want to do, this is, you know, I'm, th I'm sure you could, th you know, could think about other things in your business. The worst thing you could do when something wrong happens in your business is to make rash decisions and emotional decisions because you'll make decisions re you regret no matter how bad the problem is. You stop for a day, you sleep on it, then you act so that you're thinking with a clear head. And so um, you don't want to be doing that stuff with your PPC. You'll screw up your results. You truly will. But respectively here, so you want to, you're, you're apt to want to change it before two weeks. I'm telling you, you don't because of all the other reason I gave you just a second ago, things fluctuate and it's totally normal. Uh, if there is a problem, of course, you'll see it before the two weeks, but respectively as well, um, it, you know, if it is something like the weather and you go in and make changes, you're going to add even more volatility to your account and it's going to ne negatively affect your results short term because of that alone. 
So in other words, you don't want to make a change unless you know you have to, because if you make a change, because Google's ad system runs off an algorithm, people think it's a light switch. No, they're constantly testing out your ads versus the other 19 people advertising in your space who also wants the same customers, and they're trying to find for what keyword, for what person, and what situation the ad should show versus somebody else's. And if you start screwing around with your ads a bunch of times, or if you change them at all, the algorithm says, oh crap, now what do I do? And then so you don't get in the normal places you were in, and then your sales short term are going to suffer. The bigger the changes you make, the more changes you make, the more the longer that that negative downtrend in your short your results short term is going to be. So, anytime you make a change, you better be doing it for a good reason in other words, because you're going to have to rip off the band-aid and suffer some short-term negative results to be able to get to the other side. So, if it's been more than 2 weeks though, most of the time, then that's when I know, okay, it's not just a weather pattern or something like that. We need to do something about it. If your if sales are down more than 50%, you're averaging 10 grand a month like I said before and your sales are 4 grand this week. Okay, that's a time when you can start to look into things, but you're going to be very careful still with, with what you're doing. And I'll throw one caveat out of that is is if it like if it's like 4th of July weekend this this 50 cent per, percent or more you probably want to wait an extra week because the sales will go hit so get hit so much during you know that during uh, 4th of July that they could be down 50 more than 50% for that week just normal or the week uh, you know Labor Day weekend and there's a few other major holidays where that would happen so anyway with all that out of the way assuming that it's been more than 2 weeks it has it wasn't a holiday your sales are down more than 50% for that whole week when it, so you're talking about 50% for one week solid that it has to be down, not just one day, because I would that's just still not good enough. You're gonna start to do some stuff. Okay, here's the thing that people don't do. I got, I got a college degree in computer networking and information systems. The first thing they always told us when troubleshooting computer networks was to check the quote unquote physical layer first. Um, what that means is instead of checking the software, making sure the software is all working, you check to see if stuff's plugged in first. Why? Because that is the most logical thing basically to do. And obviously, you're gonna there's potential to make errors when you're changing other stuff, you know that kind of thing. So, and so when we are talking about this, instead of going into your account and saying it's the account's fault, you know what's wrong? We're going to your PPC guy and and say fix it. You need to go in and look at your website. Check if you're doing leads, check your lead forms. Test them. Are they working? Um, test it from a, di uh, a few different times. Sometimes I'll see clients that have a spam filter and the leads are getting filtered out. Sometimes you don't have to be even have done to your, anything to your site. The plugin that you're using now had some weird interaction with something else that just sprung up. Now the leads are not coming through. Or if you have a shopping cart, you're going to test some orders. You do all that stuff. You of course check all your landing pages, make sure they load. That all that stuff that comes first. Okay. Do on top of that, in terms of the, if you're wondering wondering why your sales are down, then you're going to want to fill out a form. And as painful as this is to do for a lot of people, you're going to actually pretend like you're a customer, or like a secret shopper, and you're going to make sure your salespeople and your lead flow system is on point. Make sure they're not screwing up. Do the same thing with the phone. Check that out. Once you're absolutely clear that there's zero problem with anything to do with the person physically going through the sales process, then we can go through the next steps. As any drastic changes you make to your to your campaigns, like I said, will fluctuate your results. So if your results were bad, you haven't seen nothing when you go in there and start screwing a bunch of stuff, mixing stuff around, making a bunch of changes. Now they're even worse. And then you're going to panic. And then you're going to change more, and then it's going to get worse, and then you're going to change more. You see how this goes? I've seen people completely destroy their account. It was good. They've gotten to this death spiral of this negative thinking, crap thinking, and they were making you know f uh, seven figures a year from this account, and, and that drop in revenue. They had all the overhead. They couldn't handle it. They literally went out of business. And I'm not even joking with that. More than once, I've seen people do this. So please don't think on emotion. Don't go through that cycle. Um, you, 
yourself. So anyway, that said, okay, it's not a physical layer problem. Reasons sales fluctuate here are, here's the five basic ones that I categorize where there's a problem and of what you can necessarily do about it, if anything. New competitor. Now, obviously this isn't gonna happen a lot, but you know, one thing you can just do quickly is type in Google a bunch of your keywords and see if there's anybody new there that's consistently always showing up in the top four spots. Uh, if they're not consistently showing up, it probably is not gonna affect your results anyway, but you know, search for 10 or 12 or 15 terms. If they're showing up up top consistently and you haven't seen them before, that can be a reason. And with that, you know, the answer simply is, I gotta do better than them. Whatever they're doing, I gotta still do better. Your goal should always automatically to do better than all your competitors anyway. Don't be a me too guy or gal because that's gonna mean you're gonna get everybody else's results. 80% of people who run ads aren't really making any money. Either they don't know they're making money or they just aren't because they're, they're not, their customer experience that they're giving the user is not good enough and is conducive enough to actually make money with the ads. If you see a new guy show up, he seems like he's got a hot landing page, hot ad, do bet, figure out how you can do better than that. Obviously, if you don't know how or aren't sure about it, instead of randomly testing a bunch of stuff, get with somebody who knows what they're doing. If you're working with somebody who says they know what they're doing, give them, you know, a couple months to, to get physically, you're looking for a higher click-through rate on your ad than you had before, or at least back up to where it was, which, you know, if you have a competitor with a better ad, your click-through rate will go down. And uh, like the conversion rate on your site, if that went down, of course, or just the amount of revenue you're generating from your from your landing page, let's say, or revenue, then uh, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna consult with, with the person, your, your current agency, how to get something that's gonna be improved enough to give you that edge. And if you don't have somebody who can in a couple months, get your conversion rates back up to where they were, hire somebody better, simply put. Second reason, algorithmic changes, or algorithm changes, sorry. So basically Google's, I talked about a bit ago, how Google's ad system is run off of an algorithm. So basically they're constantly test, they have a profile on every person who uses Google. What you like, what your you know, feelings are like, your moods, your attitudes, what you like, uh, what your hobbies are, they track everything. What, they have thousands of data points on every person. And they use these data points of each user to, with, in combination with um, you know, what you search for to, su to see if you see what ad from you or competitor you know, B or C or D. Kind of explained this before. And so, because they're constantly attempting to try to give overall their users a be the best experience possible so people get addicted and want to use Google. And so their algorithm, they code the algorithm to figure out a better way as the goal all the time to be able to do that. And they can gauge that based upon, of course, did people get what they wanted? And did they, were they satisfied after making the initial search of what they were looking for? And so a lot of times they'll recode that, just like the SEO organic stuff, they, the search ranking algorithm updates, people know about that, but they don't know about the Google ad algorithm that's constantly searching for the better way to run the ad platform and how the ads are hosted and what the what what it's prioritizing over something else they could change something and that could change results obviously if that happens you know basically there's nothing you can do about it anyway it's just a possibility and this is to where you're going to notice it because Google usually tests things out very 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 slowly um, you're not going to notice it and even if they do change something the, the, everything will kind of balance out, but it's just a possibility. I just wanted to throw that out there. The third thing, system changes. So one example of this is like when Google changed their policy on keyword match types. Last, uh, middle 2020, they changed, so, so exact match, instead of you know where you put a keyword in brackets, it's supposed to have, like if your, your keyword is leather shoes, you can only show up for leather shoes, not red leather shoes and big red leather shoes. Well, now that's exactly how it works. You're not even getting, there's no option to only have this, the keyword as what will trigger you know, your ad, if you will, the, the, the keyword to trick, just your keyword itself only being the, the phrase that will trigger the ad. It can be close derivatives now. 
And so that actually, for a lot of B2B advertisers, threw a lot of campaigns into the garbage can until they were able to react, add enough negative keywords to fix that. So one thing that you can do about that is just go Google, uh, you know, on, go on Reddit. There's PPC forums. There's people don't know about it, but there's 60,000 uh, Reddit um, subscribers. You could go in there and you could ask them, hey, is there anything going on? Uh, and you could sometimes get somebody who knows about your industry because there's a bunch of agency guys there. Of course, if you go to your ag agency. If they, one of the benefits of working with an agency that's got 30, 40, 50, 100 clients is they already have a, an idea exactly of this stuff going on. So they can tell you not to react to this or it's fine and then you can deal with it. You may not like the answer, but it's a lot better, hell of a lot better making random changes in a panic, which is gonna, like I said, can throw you into a spiral of negative you know, be, uh, results from your account, making a change, seeing the volatility, that causing a negative uh, reaction in your account, then, doing, then making another change to because you're even more panicked now, so on and so forth, like I said. I won't go through that whole thing again, but so you have that. Fourth one is uh, account changes. So. Of course, if you make any changes to your account, like I said, you're gonna experience some short-term volatility. The bigger the change you make, a bigger change being like if you change the landing page completely, it can take uh, two to three months to recover from that fully. If you change the ad, uh, turn off one ad, turn another one on, it can be a, a month to two months before you see you know, the full things spring back up to where they're supposed to be. If you change the bids, it might be you know, two, three, four, seven days. People argue with me about this all the time. I don't know why, but it, it affects you longer than you think. People don't, I guess, want to believe it. I've looked at hundreds of accounts. I know this is the case. So, but the main thing is, what I've, what, why I listed this one is, is a lot of times somebody else will make changes in the account and you won't realize it. If you go into the accounts, what's called the change history, you can see all the changes by every single user who has access to the account. A lot of times people will have an employee going in there and changing stuff, won't realize it. That will affect your results. And so instead of making changes or even having the PPC agency make changes for you because you want them to help you out, pull out of what you have, they don't even, they don't think to check that somebody, some rogue employee are making changes and then that, you know, could have been sorted out right away. And then you could also block them so they don't make any more changes. The other, another thing that I've seen people do a lot is the last agency they hired, they don't kick them out. So then later on, this other agency's in there making changes for whatever reason. So you wanna check to make sure when you switch agencies, kick everybody else out for one. Two, um, just basically, you could check there if you know for, as you go to check your change history, um, just as a side note. But then beyond that, seems like every client that we have anymore, um, that starts out like almost half the time, Google will get in touch with the, with the client of ours and then convince the client to switch over to some other conversion tracking type or something like that. And then the client will just think, oh, it's Google. How, how could they be lying to me? Uh, and it, oh, the changes didn't seem that big a change. And then they'll go ahead and they'll do all this stuff that the Google rep wants them to do and that'll change your results. Like the spend, the spend will now be double, the, it'll, your account will, spend double the rate it was before, which is very common, because this is, what, of course, what they want you to do, uh, spend more, then they'll come to me and say, Corey, why is my account spending so much? And then I'll say, uh, well, yeah, I'll look into it, and then there's a bunch of changes. And I said, what about these changes? Of course, oh, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. So by Google or otherwise, that's suggesting you or to another employee, just another kind of thing to check for, count changes, those are just some other you know things that I've seen commonly. So just another thing to be aware of. And then seasonal changes. So I make a joke, uh, I have made a joke, I should say a lot of times here that if a client, we have, you know, we have um, with our guaranteed PPC contracts where they have to pay later, if the contract did not end in a season where they're having their worst month or months, the client would never end the agreements with us because they would they all ultimately people no matter whether they should understand it or not they think that their sales should be like if they're high in July and they're normally not high in in, in August you get to August and they're complaining about why their sales are not high in August and then you explain to them like it, there is 
um, you know, seasonal fluctuations you also have to account for here as well. You could see it the previous years, the numbers are down, and then, you know, of course, they, they get it or kind of not get it, whatever. But um, they think, and then if you're in the good months, of course, on the flip side, they think you're amazing at that time. So, of course, not, there's no problem then, even though most of, I, I'm, I, I'm getting credit for something that just normally happens that month. The sales... And it doesn't kind of matter. I mean, some businesses more than others, but there's definitely months or seasons for quite, I'd say half the companies we work with, the sales are double one part in terms of the ROI, double one part of the year than the other. For e-commerce, it's near Christmas. Uh, they're, they're higher. You know, whereas right after Christmas, the sales tank because everybody spent their, their wad of money already. And then, you know, for like a local service businesses, uh, during the winter, they totally suck. But then in March, they're super, super high in terms of the, the conversion and ROI that you're getting. So you gotta pl you got to know all this ahead of time so that you don't panic and you know what's normal for that time of the year, specifically for that month, because each month can be broken down to have a different level of potential so that you don't go in to make these changes again unless you have to, unless you know you have to. Like I said, you want to stay away from a change if you can, and then if you do proper planning, you can avoid making a change you don't need to make. So getting into that, this is what I do to also make sure I don't, we have as little kind of uh, problems with the client in terms of them panicking, if you will. I don't, my goal is to make sure they know exactly what they're supposed to get so they don't have to panic for their own sake and mine. And so what we do is we plan out, so I'll, I'll do a, like a Google shared sheet and I will have the client, I'll put in there, to like the previous three years by year, you know, 2020, 2019, 2018, and we put in there by month, if they've been running their ads long enough, how much they spent in ad spend each of those months going back. So 36 months total going back the three years. And I have the client fill in what their monthly sales were overall. It doesn't matter if it's just for PPC, but overall each month in those same 36 individual months as well. Once you've done that, you can see the ratio for the year overall uh, that you're getting from from overall revenue to ad spend so you can kind of see where you're out there and with that you can see how the ratio fluctuates uh, during the good months versus the bad months and how just the sales trend year to year and specifically by month once you have that information then you can make some really good determinations as to for the next 12 months what the number should actually be by month so you can actually, what ultimately comes down to is you want, you know, you get to the point where you know the sales are down for two weeks, more than two weeks, like I said, and then you can look at the sales tally for that month, and then you can look back at your sheet of where you're supposed to be at for July for this year, counting the major factors, and if it looks like you're, you know, of course, within, you know, plus or minus, let's say, 50% of, of where you're supposed to be at for that point in the month, then that, that may be normal fluctuation still. Um, you know, if, if you're supposed to have, you know, 50,000 a month in, in sales for uh, 50,000 in sales in July and we're at, you know, July 15th, as long as you're over 25,000, for the most part in that situation, I'm just not panicking yet. It's not enough to know something's for, broken. I'll of course suggest we check the physical layer their site and everything else to see if things are not screwed up and check the account and make sure the the account is basically um, you know there's nothing really changed or or, or uh, you know made, made mainly ma massively changed there and if not we just keep going you also know the sales are down if the the search impressions you have are down because that shows if there's less people searching that month which can happen more so than outside just being a season where people search less you can normally, you know, on a short-term basis or on a, on a micro level, have less searches, of course, um, which is going to be the top reason in terms of quickly looking at the account, what I'm looking for. And, um, and with that, I'm also going to check my search impression share because if the search impression share went down, which is the reason why the impressions went down, then I'm also going to think that that's probably a competitor. And realistic, so I can look at that real quick and then if, if we know we need so much volume and volume is more important than the ROI, we'll boost up the bids by 20, 30% to get us back on track short term so that the volume is there. 
But anyway, going back to what th this three year thing I was talking about, basically when you have your, your going back three years, your ad spend, and they should be ad spend from all your you know platforms, F Facebook, Google added together so you can see it. So you want a total ratio of total PPC versus total revenue. Um, I know that's not perfect if you have some other marketing sources, but it's at least better than nothing, okay? If you're spending ha more than half your ad budget on PPC, well, it's, it's real good. So you have all that, and then your goal is to, for the next 12 months, know what's normal for January through December, okay? So assuming you are not going to spend any more on ads, you're going to have the same exact budget as last year, and you don't have anybody optimizing the ads, well, it gets real simple. You just really are planning to have the same exact sales that you had in January, the last year for January this year, last year, February you got this, this February you got this, as long as you spent what you spent in February of last year, because ad spend can fluctuate. And so if your sales are down, you can immediately, in February, you can immediately check your ad spend where you're pacing there. And if you see your ad spend's down 20%, well, that's part of the reason. And you can, then that might be because search volume naturally is down for that month, and you can decide to up your bids. Like I said, you, you know, that's a cho your choice. Your ROI will go down a little bit, but you, you won't have to panic. You'll know more so right away than what's the problem, and it's not a major issue. Nothing's majorly broken. But anyway, beyond that, if you do have, let's say I want to, I'm, everything's working great. I got the ROI, 10 to 1 uh, ROI that I'm looking for in terms of ratio of total sales to ad spend, and I want to be able to reinvest some more back into my ad spend this year. I'm going to reinvest another 10% of our budget, right? So with that, I'm spending 30 grand a year in ad spend. We want to do 33 grand this year. So what you're going to do, of course, is you're going to, instead, you know, for January, you're going to have the budget last year, you know, plus 10%, and then February, the same thing. So you already have a budget laid out. In terms of the revenue that you're expecting, here's what I generally tell people and do for our own clients here when we run these reports here for ourselves as well. You got to realize that just because you spent 10% more budget in Jan January doesn't mean you're going to right away in January have 10% more sales. It's not how it works at all. There's a huge sales cycle window from the time when somebody initially starts researching and then clicks on your site to the time that they actually buy, of course. Um, if you have people that subscribe on your site, one way to tell uh, how what's the average time to see when you're, good, you're actually going to get most of the value out of what you're reinvesting into your account is you look at the subscriber length in terms of the time they subscribe to the time they um, unsubscribe or basically just stop responding. Let's say it was 10 months, the average uh, time from that they're a subscriber, okay? Well, in that case, basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna know if we're spending 10% more budget this year, we're not gonna have the full 10% increase in sales until October, okay? Or actually November in that case. And so we'll, we'll, we'll assume 10% of the increase happened in January. So, you know, in January we know we take our previous year's sales plus 1%, and then that's our predicted sales for that month, of course. And then, you know, for February, it'll be the pa past February sales plus 2%. And so you'll get the full, you get my point, the full increase in sales from it by October but you also know leading up to that, you should still have some increase that you're seeing so you know as much as possible if you're on the right track um, using that method. Of course, um, like if you s sell a, a product that's commonly you, where you have a reoccurring purchases in your company, you sell clothing, you know, people normally buy more than one thing from you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the lifetime value of a customer and how long it takes for that average customer to spend 80% of the money they're ever going to spend with you. With that, that's how I'm going to factor in with a budget increase, how long it's going to take to get the full ramp up in, in sales from the ramp up in budget that I did. Okay. If you are a type of business where you're selling one time, one thing, the one customer one time and they'll never buy again. Um, and you generate leads. I'm going to look at the average length of time it takes when the lead is generated to the time a sale is made, which is normally called the sales cycle window, right? I'm going to double that length of time, and then that's the time I'm going to expect, and only going to expect, I got the full increase in sales I'm going to get from the increase in budget I had. Uh, so, so that gives you an idea for di your different 
business types, how you're going to factor that out. And of course, so with that, once you've gotten that far, it tells you exactly in October what sales you're going to expect, given that you're now spending more money. Plus, October normally has, let's say, negative 20% than average sales that month. So you really got a good bead on what October should be so that when you're, you already know <laughs> going into October, I'm expecting this, and not to panic until we're you know, significantly lower than that target. And basically, like I said, the sales are down for at least two weeks and I'm looking for, it's more than 50% down. Uh, if you get to the full month and you're, and you're way off, uh, as long as I'm not up uh, more than 50% off, I'm gonna go one more month, really before I do anything drastic or panic too much. And then if two months in a row we're off, that's when I mo mostly am going to start to think, what else should we do? Something, some other things that could be done is you can run a, a, a sale. You can put a remarketing ad to all the people who've been to your site and say, we'll give you X, Y, Z if you come and buy this month. That's a one way to quickly pick up your sales as well. So um, if you are having an agency helping you get the cost per lead or cost per sale, or another way to say it, the ROI on the account up further, not to necessarily spend more on your account, but just take the same spend and make it be more productive so you get more ultimately sales and revenue out of it. Then uh, what I'm gonna do with my three year projection then is I'm actually going to, instead of what I talked about before with the ramp up and budget, instead of that, I'm gonna assume whatever the entire gain in performance we got, we're gonna look at the last year, whatever efficiency gain we got from January through December of last year, we're gonna divide that by half and that's what our assumed efficiency gain is gonna be this year. Because ultimately here's, here's kind of how it works. If all you wanna do is just get more sales for the same money, basically what, you, what happens is you're gonna be able to get a really good progress the first year and then it'll be about half the amount the second year, half of the amount the third year, half of the half, and then half of the half again. Eventually, you're going to run out of things you can do to optimize, and you're only just going to get so much. Or in other words, you will keep getting more, but the amount of gains you get each year will be less and less and less, okay? So that's why I said you look at the last year's average gain for the year, or just gain for the year in efficiency. Divide that by two, and then for the, the following year, you know, in January, okay, it's supposed to be more than January's numbers last year, but, um, it, you know, of course, it's supposed to be um, we got 25% gain last year. We're only going to have 12% this year. So we'll add 1% in terms of January sales last year to, uh, to understand what our January sales would be this year, right? And to be even more accurate, you could actually assume that most of that, you know, 12% will be at the back half of the year. And you could get fancy with it and put, you know, weight it so that most of the, instead of 1% in December, it's more like 2%. And in January, it's like 0.5%. But that's the other thing I'm gonna do if we're look, working on efficiency only. And as a quick side note to that whole thing, you're gonna get the most value out of a PPC agency if you can, you'll find a reasonable ROI from your account you can deal with and then try to scale, increase the ad spend as much and as quick as you can while maintaining that ROI. If you're at you know, a 10 to one ROI, you're like, I want a 12 to one, I want a 14 to one, you're not gonna get the full value out of the agency assuming it's someone that can get you results and of course the agencies that can get you results are not cheap they're several thousand a month the cheap agencies that spend you know charge 500 a month or so they can't get you results respectively i if you find a good one i will hire them um because it's a lot of work i know how much this work it is because i've got, and i got a guarantee results for our clients who so understand I'm, I'm not playing games here and understand i just have tried i know all the options basically so um you know, respectively, that is, put, but though just summing everything up, that's going to sum up everything that you need to do to, in order to not um, have to panic and, you know, go through this whole situation where now you got to figure out who you're going to, who else you need to hire to dig you out of this, or do you want to really press the agency you're with to make changes, uh, which those changes are going to have some sort, you know, it's a guess whether it'll work even, and no matter what, that change is going to negatively affect our results short term because of the algorithm and how all that works. But, and so you can make as little, have as little panic as possible. And 
make as little changes as possible because the changes itself will cause some negative you know, short-term effect on your account as well. And uh, so yeah, that's uh, everything kind of in a nutshell about do, should I be panic, panicked, sales are down this week, like you, you figured out in this video pretty much. No, you shouldn't have to panic. Short term, get out a little bit further, what you can look at um, and how to actually get out ahead of it a little bit more for your business so you don't have to run into a situation where you're panicking very much or at least no false positives or very little to where you are only panicking once there actually is a problem or as much as possible. Hope you enjoyed this video. I have a, quite a few other videos like this on this channel. If you like this video, you can uh, check out, I have a ton of other videos on other money-making PPC strategies of how to build accounts that work basically every time. I have a blog at guaranteeppc.com slash blog, which has step-by-step -step instructions on how to build uh, campaigns that I guarantee for our clients here. If you like, like to learn uh, how to do things that way, it's, it's there for you as well. If you have any questions or comments about this, leave me a comment down below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment on this channel. I'll certainly get back to you. So other than that, let me know if you do any of this preparation work like uh, mentioned on this video. I'd like to hear from you how, how it's went for you as well.